What's up everybody? My name is Taylor. Welcome to my first YouTube video. So for those of you who do not know me, I am a content creator on the platform TikTok where I make videos all about finance, stock market, investing, smart money tips, strategies for being your best self, and so on and so forth. I started this community with the intent of making easy to understand information about a finance world that is not very beginner friendly. And let's dive right into it. Now, what is blockchain technology? How do you use it? Should we use it? Is it here to stay? All right, so you've probably heard a lot about blockchain technology, and now that it's been pretty mainstream for months, it can be a little bit hard to say, so what really is blockchain technology? So that is my job today. I am going to make you maybe not an expert, but you will certainly have a really good understanding of what this is, so the next time that it comes up or the next time you are interested in investing in it, you will have a better idea of how to do so. So blockchain technology refers to a digital ledger that holds all of the transaction history across that specific cryptocurrency. So I know I probably just said a lot of different words that were potentially a foreign language. So let's back it up. Throughout history, we have accepted currency in many different forms, whether it was seeds, silver, gold, labor, cattle, you name it, we've accepted money in so many different forms. Now, we are in a new form of currency. So we are, what we are most familiar with is known as fiat currency. So this is going to refer to our US dollars, our $5 dollar bills, the coin change, those things. That is a fiat currency. Believe it or not, that money is not actually backed by anything other than trust. So a lot of people think that gold or silver back the US dollar, but that is not exactly true anymore. So what it is, is it works on a form of trust. Trust that the government will accept this $5 bill in my pocket as $5 down the line. So I understand that sounds a little bit weird, but that is how things are run. This all means that the banks have so much control because every transaction that we make makes a pit stop at the bank. So specifically, let's say I am wiring money to somebody. That is going to go first to the bank and then to that person. So every single stop at the bank gives the bank power, it gives them control. In theory, the bank could wake up tomorrow and tell me that I am paused for my money for X period of time. Obviously, they would have a of an argument coming from me and anyone else this happens to, but that is an understanding that you need to have that in concept, the banks have the power to freeze your money for X, Y, Z reason. All of this, the pit stops at the bank, that is referred to as a centralized finance. Now imagine the banking, the banks having a huge computer that has a document full of all of the transactions. This is known as a ledger. So this ledger that the banks have, unfortunately can be and has been manipulated in the past, like this Wells Fargo scandal where the employees were making fake accounts and pumping millions of dollars through. So think of it this way, the fewer number of restrictions that somebody has to get through in order to have access to all of your money, the less safe that it is, okay? So that is fiat currency, that is centralized finance. Let's talk about blockchain technology and decentralized finance. Now we are in the world of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. So what this means is now instead of the paper dollars and the coins or whatever other currency has been accepted, we have now created a digital form of currency. And instead of doing a pit stop through the bank, this was designed as a peer to peer transaction. That means every computer that makes a cryptocurrency transaction, holds a ledger for that transaction, which means instead of one bank holding one ledger, there are thousands of computers holding a ledger. Furthermore, at any given time, you can pull up all of the transactions that have happened with that specific coin, which make it very secure and nearly impossible to hack or cheat. So now you have kind of a rough understanding of what blockchain technology is, which again, in short, is the chain of all of the ledgers across all of the computers who use the platform. 
So how does a transaction take place? Let's say I was opening my phone and creating an order. A new transaction is entered. The transaction is then submitted to a network of peer-to-peer -peer computers. The network then solves the equation to make sure that there is a match for my purchase. Once the computers recognize that my purchase is legitimate, it is then placed into a block. This block is chained on to the end of all of the other transaction history. And then my transaction is complete. But the last thing to understand is, is it going to be used in the future? Should you be investing in it? So there's been a lot of different talk in the stock market about market manipulation and control and the suits are out to get us and it's Wall Street versus the people and all of these things. And unfortunately, all of this has just been a massive endorsement for cryptocurrency. Why? Because if you remember, cryptocurrency is a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. Therefore, the banks and the SEC have no little to no control over cryptocurrency and the transactions that are made. So you can imagine it to be the people's currency. With that being said, we are seeing some large institutional buy-ins such as Tesla. And with these institutional buy-ins comes overall acceptance, comes higher demand, and so on and so forth. So that is a really quick update on what is cryptocurrency, what is blockchain technology. I hope you found it useful. As always, be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, I will be more than happy to answer them for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.